Tuesday. Welcome to Tuesdays with Kamira. I am Kamira. My guest is Ron. Ron's going to be talking to us about um, online gaming safety, what we need to know, what we need to discuss with our teens, the pros, the cons, all the good stuff that we're anxious about. And do we need to be anxious or not? I don't know. Ron's going to tell us. <laughs> Welcome, Ron. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're yeah, welcome. Happy to, happy to be here. We're glad you are. Um, I want to remind people that if you're watching us live, please leave a comment or question in the comment section so that we can address it. We'd love to have this conversation with you. We'll make it more than just Kamara or Ron. Ron, let's jump right on in it. And why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and your work? For sure. So my name is Ron Kerbs. I'm, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Kiras. And moved to, to the U.S. about five years ago. Some of you can probably hear from my accent that I'm originally from Israel. And, and started to, to, to address the problem of online safety because I'm, I'm a gamer myself. So I realized that there is a huge problem in gaming safety. And a lot of kids are bullied, harassed, scammed while playing online games. And I experienced it you know, playing online uh, as a grown up, but also, you know, as a teenager. Um, and unfortunately, there is no solution currently to solve those uh, problems. So I decided to create one. Uh, so we started Kidas in 2020 uh, to address the risk in gaming. And, and we created a software for parents that they can install on their uh, gaming, on their kids' gaming device and, and receive alerts about threats like bullying, harassment, uh, scams, or anything that can put their kids into danger. That is fascinating. Um, and I know there are a lot of parents out there who are wondering, okay, where can I give this? So why don't you tell us your URL so that we can pop that into the comment section? Yeah, for sure. So the URL is getkidas.com. So it's G-E-P-K-I-D-A-S.com. Um, available for computer, Windows computer devices uh, to start with. Um, yeah, um, and I'll be happy, you know, Within the conversation, I'd be happy to talk about gaming, but I don't want I don't want to scare anyone. Like my last goal here is to scare anyone. I don't want to do that. Uh, you know, I think gaming is is great. I think that kids should be playing, um, as, you know, a natural way for kids to to develop some moral skills, uh, some social skills. It's it basically became the new city hall. It's the way to communicate with your friends. It's a way for you to meet new people and play with your with your friends and um, you know there are a few few things that parents should should notice and you know our software solves some of them and um, but definitely don't want to scare anyone or make you feel like you shouldn't allow your kids to stay because that's definitely not the goal of this conversation i love that i love that we're really just talking about the do's and don'ts of online gaming safety but also it's unavoidable, really. It's not as if we can say, you aren't allowed to do that. This is not the world we live in these days. So we might as well become versed in what's going on because it's it's unavoidable. It's out there. The genie is out of the bottle. Um, let's begin with the positive. Are there any benefits to online gaming? Uh, for sure, there are a lot of benefits. And actually, studies uh, show that. So there are some cognitive uh, advantages. Um, so including coordination and that video games uh, provide and develop a uh, hand-eye coordination and also some social skills. And so recent studies show that kids who play within a team are actually more likely to be a uh, great uh, team players. And so we do see that there are a lot of benefits uh, in terms of playing gear, uh, games, uh, social benefit, and also motoric benefits that we, we should consider when we talk about gaming with our kids or considering uh, to let them play or not to let them play. Um, but with those, of course, advantages, uh, there are some disadvantages and some risks. Uh, so it's estimated that about 50% of the kids who play will be bullied or harassed before they turn 18. And um, sometimes it's really severe, sometimes less severe, uh, but most of the kids who play will come across um, this behavior uh, because some players are actually really toxic. And it's not necessarily that, you know, when we talk, when I talk with parents about those topics and uh, the first thing that they come into their mind is like online predators or scammers or adults trying to take advantage of their kids. 
a lot of those times it's actually classmates and friends from school that are bullying each other the same things that you know sometimes happen in school and so not all of the you know toxic behavior that we're seeing uh, in online gaming is related to grown-ups bullying or scamming kids sometimes it's kids among themselves Let's talk about scamming. I want to break this down piece by piece. What do we mean when we're saying scamming? Let's let's have some uh, definitions here. How do yeah, so, um, young people get scammed online? Yeah, so when we're talking about scamming, we're talking about uh, getting private information to be used for financial reason. So if someone asking your child for a password, a credit card number, um, uh, those kind of things, basically we're talking about a scammer. They're trying to use the password to steal some virtual assets from the gaming account or use the credit card number to charge your credit card. And um, so basically any activity uh, that results in a tech or ability to get some financial incentives um, is what we define scam. Um, in gaming, scams became really, really um common in the last few years, especially with the, with the development of new ways to connect gaming to payment methods or even to Bitcoin or some other alternative coins, uh, because it's, it, it became a little bit more difficult to track those payments. So if someone is sending you a private payment link and it's sending you to a third party app to, to pay or maybe share your credit card information, uh, it's pretty hard to track those people once they once they use their, your credit card information, but we shouldn't take it like that far. Um, a lot of the cases, in a lot of the cases, we're talking about um, teen sh teen sharing their passwords for for the games, uh, and in a lot of the cases, some virtual assets, things that they with, while playing the game is actually stolen for are actually stolen from their account, and, and we you know as grown ups we think okay these are just virtual assets, it's just like skins or some tools that they earn while playing the game. But we, we should keep in mind that some of those kids play sometimes a year or sometimes more than that just to earn those specific virtual assets. So those are just trophies and, you know, they're not applicable in the outside world, but those are things that are really, really important for, for those kids. Um, and we, we had cases of kids that, you know, their parents started to use Kiras after their virtual assets were stolen and they stopped playing stop playing the game. So they, they, they didn't want to use, you know, the game again, because they said, like, I invested the, the last two years just playing this game. And, and suddenly someone just stole my virtual assets. I, I don't want to play it anymore. And um, so those are some of the cases that we, we came across. So you brought up two points that I want to reiterate. The virtual assets, interesting, because I just talked to my teen on the way upstairs to have this interview with you. And I was telling him, oh, we're talking about more than predators and scammers, although we will be talking about that. And I was talking to him about the whole virtual assets and how that can be stolen and how that's another verse, another type of scamming. And he was like, oh, yeah, even though he's a gamer, he's like, that's true. That is a big thing. Um, and something that you told me during our pregame about passwords, uh, we have to reinforce to our tweens and tweens not to share their passwords because often the passwords are the same across different platforms. So they're using the same gaming platform, um, the same password for their game that they may be using for other things. It could be a family password that they're using that you're also connected to your PayPal account or Venmo or Cash App or something. So that's why it's important, not just for access to their games, but let's face it, a lot of us have only one or two passwords that we use all around and we have lots and lots of different apps and such that need passwords. For sure, and you know, we, would never think about sharing our bank account password with, you know, with, with other people, especially, you know, not people that you, we, we just know a little bit. Um, but some of us, and, you know, uh, some companies are addressing it uh, just, you know, just recently, some of us do share their Netflix password with their friends because, yeah, it's okay. And, and we should treat those kids are sharing their gaming platform, their, their gaming passwords because they're sharing it with their friends. They want to get some tips or maybe they want to share some of the content. Um, and that's that's okay as long as they understand exactly the consequences of sharing the passwords. And and as, as you mentioned, like in most of the cases, the, the 
forget that the same password they've viewed for, for other platforms, whether it's their school account or their email account. And once you get access to their email account, you can basically get access to most of their other accounts. Um, so first of all, I would recommend parents to for, make, make sure that they, they use different passwords for um, all of their accounts. And, and after you make sure that they use different passwords, talk with them about password sharing. Like it, we, we don't necessarily say that, you know, if they have a really good friend and they want to share something, it's not okay to share their password once in a while, uh, but they should, should understand that, you know, a friend could be a friend today and could be not a friend, you know, in a, in a year from now. And they should know that some people may get access to their account. And if they earn, and, you know, a lot of virtual assets or things that they don't want to lose, they should be really careful with the, their password, the same as parents are careful with their uh, online banking password. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about predators. Uh, when we think about predators, we're thinking about those, you know, those news magazine, TV news magazine stories. We hear about our um, young people being lured away to, from the home. Tell us how that happens and what we may be missing about this. It, it's a definition larger than that. Yeah, so I think I think most parents out there um, would imagine you know an like predator or some middle-aged guy who is trying to get you know um, kids to to meet them. Uh, but in a lot of the cases, you know, yeah, we we have those cases. Uh, uh, but in a lot of the cases, those are you know younger um, younger adults. Uh, we had cases of predators who are 24, 25. A lot of the times they're famous in their space. So there are YouTubers or famous gamers and they're using their popularity or their influence to, to get to those kids. So they're starting to talk with their kids and now the kids are talking with, you know, someone who's famous, at least in their world. And they're talking with someone who has a lot of views, has a lot of uh, YouTube videos with a lot of views, a lot of followers. And they start by building trust. They, they tell them, hey, I want to feature you on my account. How about we play together? How about we communicate? And so that's the first step. The second step is taking them off the game. So they're, they're talking about, hey, I don't feel really you know, comfortable talking here in the game. How about we switch to another platform? How about we switch to maybe we switch to WhatsApp or maybe Telegram? And, and usually they're choosing specific apps that are Encrypt so no one can follow them or no one can get access to, to the conversation because they know that some of the games do record the conversations. Discord, um, which is a, a popular gaming communication app, and uh, that have a, a safety and moderation team to, to detect those uh, those scenarios. And so they're trying to to get kids to, to switch to those platforms. And once they get to those platforms, they then usually and uh, they start to get more information for the kids of like uh, of for example, it could be, hey, send me a nude picture or send me something like that. And, and you know, it's not the first thing that they're getting. They're, they're sending those things after they already build trust. So it could come to that only after a few weeks that they have been talking and, and they already build the trust and they already have the credibility because they're famous and they see them, you know, every day on YouTube. And so those come, those are some of the things that we were witnessing. And, you know, there, there were a few, few, very famous cases of YouTubers, especially gaming YouTubers, taking advantage of, of young kids. Wow. What Now, if our young people have been scammed somehow, should we report it? And if we should, how do we report, report it? To where? Yeah, it, it really depends on, on the situation. I think that the first thing that most parents do when their child is being scammed online is telling them, hey, you're not playing anymore. Uh, but I think that's, you know, that's a wrong response. Uh, basically, they are ashamed. They, you know, someone tricked them. Like they, they, they didn't want to be tricked. So someone tricked them. Yeah, they were maybe naive or they didn't understand the concept of sharing password or sharing information. Uh, but we should actually build their confidence. Uh, so I think the first thing to do when you start um, understanding the situation is talking and communicating the situation with the kid. And so explaining what went wrong and what are the things that they, uh, they should address and should do in the next time that something like that happened. And then I think that in order to resolve the situation, you should definitely involve your kid. So definitely report, you know, law enforcement, it depends on the situation, but it could be local law enforcement or it could be, um, you know, um, 
some, something else, depending the, really depending on the situation. And as part of the recommendation that we send to parents, we do recommend them what they should do uh, in those situations. But I think the most important thing and the most critical point I would want parents to to get out of this conversation is talk with your child. Don't try to you know manage a situation um, without your child because that's also a learning opportunity for you and your child. And, and yeah, if it happens now, maybe you know a virtual asset was stolen. Maybe this virtual asset was, you know, worth twenty or thirty or forty or maybe more than that. Uh, but but you know that's a learning opportunity. That's something that will not happen in the future. That's something that we can use as an educational experience for for those kids. Okay, talk to them about it instead of penalizing them for it happening. Um, Hacking is part of scamming. What can we do to protect our young people's identities and to help them protect their identities, really, because they're the ones who are gaming. We're not the ones who are doing it. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of the things that we were addressing is kids getting offers that are too good to be true. So click this link and you're going to get V-Bucks or Robux. Those are the virtual currency that are used in Fortnite and Roblox. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, adults also fall for those kind of things. You, we, we get spam emails, we get scam emails, and sometimes we, we click those things. So the first thing that we should t- teach them is that, like, usually there are no free gifts. So and definitely if you come across something that looks too good to be true, you know, talk with your parents, check it out. Don't click the link within the email or within the message. Go to Google or Bing or a search engine and then try to Google the offer and see if you see come, something coming up. Other than that, um, definitely important to, to have always have an antivirus running on the computer and firewall um, because a lot, of those, a lot of those hackers are using links within the game to install viruses um, on, the, on top of the computer. So definitely important to, to make sure. And, and I would recommend it to anyone out there, not just gamers, to have antivirus and a firewall installed on the computer. Okay. I like your hint about Googling the offer. And that's something, that's a definite conversation starter that we can have with our children when we're commuting in the car with them or something, um, talking about Googling an offer, maybe even talking about how we received one and we Googled and found it was either valid or not valid. Yeah, for sure. And like I, I do it personally. When, when I get an email from the bank, even if it looks very legitimate, I usually don't click the offer. I first go to my directly to my bank account, log in, and then check to see if the offer still is still there. And uh, because it, it's very easy to trick you there, it's very easy to create a credible email. It's very easy to create a credible message within a game. And um, so the rule of thumb should be. You never click links within the game. You go directly to the website and then look for the offer. Okay. What about accepting friend, follower, chat, or play requests online? At some point, our young people are, you know, with tweens, we may tell them you can only play with people you know. We may give them, I've done this, a a list of people. These are the only people you can play with or, you know, your school, et cetera, et cetera. But at some point, they start playing with people they don't know, especially if they get good at the game or something that, you know, they, they, they need to widen their world. What conversations should we be having around those requests? Yeah. So first of all, it's almost impossible to prevent them from from playing with people that they didn't meet in real life. If you want to get good in those games, you have to play with you know the best players, and the best players are not necessarily the people from your school. And we, we do see kids going, you know, getting even college scholarships, playing games, League of Legends and Fortnite and so on, and you know, going to the varsity teams of of those colleges and, and high school, and just by you know just by playing uh, so you have to practice and you, you have to get good and in order to get good you have to play with players that you you, you probably never never met in real life so that's just wanted to set the stage for for that um but when we're starting to have those conversations for first of all you as a parent you have to to, to make sure that you feel confident that your child is you know mature enough to to spend time with with those people um, and i think that's and uh, a, a great time for for having the, the conversation with the child of what is appropriate and what are the things that you should share and not share with with people online. So, what are the topics that you can talk with you know someone uh, whom you know in real life, and what are the topics that you don't talk about 
with someone that you just met online. I think it's a it's a conversation started and it's an ongoing process of basically educating your kids, but also educating yourself because you're not following all of the trends, all of the slangs, all of the, the new apps, all of the new games. Uh, it's an ongoing process of educating yourself um, on what they're going through. So it's almost as if you have um, levels of friendship, right? They have their in real life friends, they have their gaming friends, they may have their social media friends and really differentiating um, how open we are with the different levels of friendship. Yeah, 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 for, for sure. Um, that definitely encourage them to to understand who are the people I know the who, who I know the real identity of, and who are the people I just met online. And I, you know, I can play with them, but I cannot trust them with all of the things that I'm doing online. And, and sometimes, you know, we, when we grew up, like most of your friends were around you. Um, and that was, you know, that was nice and that was okay, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the people who are interested in the things that you're interested in live in the same geographical area as you. And, and with the, the benefits of online and the benefits of online gaming, you can get friends who, are, who live maybe 1,000, 2,000 miles away from you, uh, but they're still interested in the same thing that you, you are interested in. Uh, so the fact that they're not in the same geographical area doesn't mean that you shouldn't be friends with them. It, it just means that you you have to start the conversation and building the relationship a little bit slower uh, in order to verify that they're actually who they claim they are. Okay, okay. What does healthy gaming look like? We're talking a lot about predators and scammers and, and doing things to prevent something bad from happening. But what does healthy gaming look like? When we, How should we be able to um, identify it when we see it in the house? Yeah, I think healthy gaming, first of all, starts with fun. Like, if it's not fun, if it's something that is not making your child happy, it's not healthy gaming. Uh, we see a lot of kids who are being bullied or be, maybe being mocked because they're good at the game. That's not healthy gaming. So definitely it should be fun. That's the, you know, that's the basic level. If it's not fun, it's not uh, healthy gaming. Then we, we also believe that gaming should be that everything else in life should be done in moderation. So if you're spending, you know, all 24 hours a day playing games, the same as anything else. Like if you're playing, if you're spending 24 hours doing anything else, it's not, you know, probably not healthy for you. And uh, the same as with gaming. And um, we think it should be fun. We, we think we should do it in moderation. Of course, some will do it more than others. If you're training to be a professional gamer, yeah, you probably spend more time and playing games than, than other kids. Um, but you should decide what is the moderate level that is appropriate for, for the specific child. And um, so I, I talked about having fun. I talked about um, doing it in, you know, uh, in a, in a, n not overdoing it, uh, of course. Uh, and, the, and the last thing that I think we, we should talk about is, is basically avoiding uh, toxic players. And um, so gaming is full with toxic players. And the reason that there are toxic players within gaming is that safety and, and trust tools were not available when gaming started. And so we, we got a lot of players who, who got used to saying things that they would not say in real life. So hate speech, bullying, all of the things that they would never consider saying at school or, you know, just to their friends, they allow themselves to, to say while playing. And, and as we get new gamers learning those things, for old gamers, they become toxic themselves. And that's like the vicious cycle that we're trying to prevent with, with Kiras, basically educating the next um, generation of gamers to be not toxic and, and to be um, b better with their friends and with their colleagues when, when they play. Um, but yeah, playing with you know toxic gamers is, is a challenge for kids uh, because sometimes when they join those teams, they are the youngest or maybe they're the le least experienced in, in the game. Uh, and when they see a toxic gamer that is performing better in the game, they think, okay, that's the way I should behave because I want to become you know, better in the game. And so playing with toxic gamers is, is something that I think most kids should avoid. Um, most, if not all kids. Um, and that's definitely a conversation starter for, for parents. And I know that I'm you know, giving parents a lot of homework out there. And you, know, you need to talk with your kids about that and that and that. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's actually like a new world. You, you, you'd never let your child drive without, you know, teaching them what is the right uh, way to drive. You would sit right next to them and show them what is the appropriate way to drive. You'll have 
enough hours together to make sure that they actually drive in properly. With gaming, it's exactly the same thing. You need to verify that you know they're playing in, in the right way. And, and you better do that when, when they're young. And because if you do it when they're young enough, you can definitely save yourself a lot of headaches uh, later on. Oh, I love the idea of saving the headaches for <laughs> when they're older <laughs> because there are enough headaches then. Um, I want to uh, emphasize the points that you made throughout is that gaming these days, it's really a bona fide extracurricular. Sometimes we don't think about it that way, especially if you're a parent of a certain vintage. For us, you know, gaming was just a little something that occupied your time, kind of like playing solitaire or something. But nowadays, it's a bona fide extracurricular. Like you said, it helps build teamwork. It's not just kids zoning out. Um there are college scholarships for it, and there are there, there are career sets. There are professional gamers now. Um, these are not huge, wide career paths, but you know, for some for some, it is a viable option. So we really need to have these conversations ongoing with our students because we don't know if this is a way to spend time or a way to socialize, or if they're really working towards something here. The same way that they could be in a, on a soccer team. For sure, and and you know, there are currently more than 400 colleges in the U.S. that offer a scholarship for, for gamers. So while it doesn't cover the entire U.S., it's still, you know, a second part of the, the number of colleges out there. So I, I would I would not recommend parents just to disregard it and say, hey, that's like nonsense. You shouldn't deal with that. The same as probably most parents would not do with, you know, with football, basketball, soccer, and tennis. And that's actually, you know, a legitimate, uh, you know, way to, to get scholarship in, in college and, you know, a le legitimate way to, to make money after college if you're actually good at what you do. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely encourage pe uh, parents to, to research about it. Uh, and while they're researching about it, if, you're, if your child is actually good at, in, in gaming and they look at it as something that they want to do in the future, there are teams out there um, that teach your child how to be better in those games. So you would never think that, hey, my child can get to the NBA without, you know, the appropriate coach or team or something like that. It, it's the same for, for gaming. If you want your child to, to get to the professional level, he, he or she has to have a team. And they, they compete with, they train with, they get, you know, the right coach to teach them and how to, how to play correctly and how to, how to get better. And the same as with any other sports. And we have to protect them and support them the same way we would with any other sport. So it's just more to learn when you're having those conversations with your student. If this is something that they're looking at that way, then you're going to have to learn the same way you'd have to learn if they were trying to play an instrument you didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, so we talked sure. like, about. Parents would, you know, drive their kids for soccer tournaments and, you know, football tournaments like um, in, in the weekends. Like, why wouldn't you support your, your child if, if he or she are trying to, to become professional gamers. And that's definitely something that is becoming more popular and, and they can make you know, a lot of money uh, doing that. So I would definitely not, uh, I would definitely take that into consideration and not you know, disrespect gaming just because it's online and we you know, treat it as something that we, we did, you, know, you mentioned solitaire or something like that, something that is you know, meaningless uh, because it's not meaningless for, for them. Exactly. That's the very crucial point that this is not meaningless for them. So therefore, it's our responsibility to support them, but also to keep them safe. So you mentioned that we should have conversations with them to keep them safe. You have your um, program that software that helps keep them self safe. Are there any is there anything else that we need to know? Yeah, any I, other I think, resources? Yeah, I think definitely I would recommend parents to learn more about the games that their kids are playing. And, and most of those games have some parental restrictions. So you can restrict um, how much time they're playing or you can restrict who are the people they, they, they can talk with. So definitely while having our software covers the, the toxicity and the conversation part and, and the game time, definitely take a look at some of the options those bigger games offer. And definitely if your kids are playing Roblox or Minecraft or Fortnite, the, the bigger games, they definitely have options to, to help you, to guide you and, and to, to help you manage screen time and some of the other aspects that parents care about. Thank you. Um, some of you who watch on Tuesdays regularly may have noticed that 
there aren't any notes in the comments section. We are without the amazing Jessica today, but that's okay because as soon as this conversation is over, I'm going to put some helpful links in there for you. So if you just scroll down, you'll find them. They'll pop up for you. We haven't forgotten about you, but we do have Ron's website. I put that in there, getkidass.com, G-E-T-K-I-D-A-S.com. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you so much for joining us. This was an important conversation. It's um, one that often would think that, oh, it doesn't have anything to do with me and, you know, or people wait until they have a problem, but we should be proactive. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I want to encourage the listeners, like, if you have a question, feel free to reach out to us. We will be happy to to help. We, we know that, you know, gaming is a new territory for for a lot of parents, we created a lot of resources, a lot of guides uh, to guide parents how to go through those situations. We we partnered with a lot of bullying experts, uh, child psychiatrists, child psychologists, um, to to basically help parents navigate those conversations. So if you see that there is something that you want to learn more about, I encourage you to go to our blog, start reading some of the articles, and definitely reach out to us on social media if you have any questions or things that you were uh, debating about. Thank you. That's a perfect place to end, where you can go to get more information. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much for this conversation. And for everybody else who's watching, I hope you'll join us next week. We'll have another equally exciting conversation. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.